ever since the release of its first season back in April of last year, it didn't take long for Outer Banks to become one of the most popular teenage dramas in the history of Netflix. So while we wait for news on the upcoming installment, let's take a look at other shows that the cast members have been involved in. Number 1. Stranger Things When it came to the casting of the leading lady of the franchise, Netflix didn't have to look too far, as the streaming platform already had a pretty great relationship with Madeline Klein due to her appearance on another Netflix original. We are, of course, referring to the time she portrayed the role of Tina in season 2 of Stranger Things. It was a pretty minor role, so you'd be forgiven if you don't exactly remember much about it. But Tina was the student responsible for throwing the Halloween party in the second installment of the franchise. Who knew that such a small role would eventually lead into that of Sarah Cameron of Outer Banks fame? Madeline wasn't the only actress to make a name for herself in the Stranger Things universe, though, with a grand total of three other actors appearing in both franchises. After spending a lot more time with Caroline Arapaglu in season two of Outer Banks, who portrays the role of Sarah's stepmother, Rose, fans started to wonder where they had seen her before. As it turns out, she looked familiar because she too made a pretty horrendous impression in season three of Stranger Things things. She brought the character of Winnie Klein to life, who for those of you who don't remember, was one of the housewives that had her lustful eyes set on Billy Hargrove. Even Chase Stokes, who was given the leading role in the Outer Banks franchise as John B., got his start in the Stranger Things universe, portraying the role of Reed in season one, who was nothing more than a rude jock of the school. And then finally, we have Nicholas Cirillo, best known for his role of the drug-dealing Barry in Outer Banks. Banks. He played a very minor role in the Stranger Things franchise and was never officially given a name. This doesn't mean he didn't appear in the end credits, though. Suffice to say, Netflix knows how to pick some incredible talent, even when it comes to its minor roles. Just look at what these glorified Stranger Things extras went on to achieve with Outer Banks. Number 2. Nashville But Netflix doesn't just pick from the actors and actresses it has already used in other flagship titles. In an effort to bump up the ratings of Outer Banks, the streaming platform gave the showrunners a pretty large budget, which allowed them to bring on the likes of Charles Esten as the infamous Ward Cameron. And although not many fans of the show can see Esten as anyone else, the older generation will know full well that he used to portray one of the main characters on a CMT show that went on to run for six seasons. We are, of course, referring to his rendition of the character Deacon from Nashville days. For those of you who don't know, Nashville was one of the most popular country dramas of the recent decade, which followed the lives of musicians as they attempted to make something of themselves. Deacon, who was portrayed by the man that we now call Ward, was a recovering alcoholic, which required some talent to bring to life. And considering how much was asked of Charles Esten on this second installment of Outer Banks, it's really no wonder that the showrunners wanted someone who was able to pull off the image of tortured yet redeemable. It wasn't just Charles Esten that the showrunners took from the cast of Nashville, though. Gary Weeks, who you'll better recognize by his portrayal of J.J.'s terrible father Luke, played a regional promoter by the name of Reed Olsen on the show during season one. Then we have E. Roger Mitchell and Brian Staff, who were brought into the Outer Bank set to portray Hayward and Cruz, respectively. But in Nashville days, they had much smaller roles that went largely unnamed. So as you can see, the showrunners knew exactly what they were doing when they went on to poach these incredible cast members from the hands of CMT. Number 3. The Walking Dead Surprisingly enough, The Walking Dead also saw a number of Outer Banks cast members introducing themselves for the first time, but this time in a post-apocalyptic world filled to the brim with zombies and other dangerous characters. Season 9 of the AMC show, for example, featured a young Caroline Arapaglu in the role of a woman who was also called Rose. We only ever get to experience Caroline's character from one of Lydia's flashbacks, though, where she remembers the time that everyone but her was killed by a recently turned zombie. And unfortunately for Caroline, this meant the death of Rose as well. Officer Gorman, the corrupt police officer of season five of the franchise, was then portrayed by Cullen Moss, who fans of Outer Banks might recognize as the now 
heroic cop of season two of the series. Brian Staff also had a very minor appearance in season seven of The Walking Dead, where he portrayed the role of Roy, a random member of the group known as the Saviors. Although it may be true that none of these roles were very memorable, the showrunners were able to see some talent in how they were portrayed, bringing these cast members on to make massive waves as cast members of Outer Banks. And there's no doubt that the casting director didn't take this prior performance of theirs into consideration. Caroline's character has precisely the same name after all, and Cullen's character started out as a corrupt cop just as he was in The Walking Dead. We're just glad that his story arc was more of a redemption than anything else. Number 4. The Originals A couple of cast members also made themselves known with some pretty great performances on The Originals, which was the original CW spinoff from The Vampire Diaries. Probably the most famous of these cast members was Madeline Klein, who played the role of Jessica for a couple of high-intensity episodes. For those of you who never took the leap and watched the originals, Jessica was very different from the Sarah Cameron we come to know in Outer Banks. As a member of the Harvest Girls, she's actually a witch that was ritualistically sacrificed by Elijah in an attempt to lock away the Hollow. And while she is eventually resurrected, this was very much the end of her strong performance on the series. She wasn't the only one who went on to play a role in the success of the Supernatural franchise, though. E. Roger Mitchell once again played the role of a building manager named Kevin back in season one of the originals, while Brian Staff only went on to feature in one episode of the teenage drama as a patrolman. Who knew that they were about to come together one more time a couple of years later? Shows just how crazy Hollywood can be at times, and just how brilliant the showrunners were at selecting cast members who clearly have a lot in common with one another. Number four. 5. American Horror Story Another massive actress that was brought in from a number of other franchises was Adina Porter, who fans of Outer Banks will know as Sheriff Peterkin. Although her character was taken out at the end of season 1, it must be said that her death is still repeated on a number of occasions throughout season 2, showing precisely how effective she was at building a relationship with the cast and audience. We still can't believe that the showrunners took such an incredible actress from us in the first season, but the shock of her death showed us all that there will be some serious consequences in the runtime of the franchise. It must be said that Adina can be found in a number of popular shows over the years, which include, but are not limited to, True Blood, The Newsroom, and The 100. And although she never seems to play a leading character, she is never one to be forgotten, which is why many of you might have recognized her. That being said, her most prominent roles have to be from the American Horror Story franchise, which is an anthology series that launched back in October of 2011. Since each and every season involves similar cast members in different roles, it goes without saying that Adina played a number of our favorite characters. In season one, for example, she had a minor role of a woman by the name of Sally. This allowed her to show her talents off, though, which clinched her the incredible roles of Hope in American Horror Story Cult, Dinah Stevens in American Horror Horror Story Apocalypse, and Lee Harris in American Horror Story Roanoke. And while we may be disappointed that Sheriff Peterkin won't be returning anytime soon, it sounds as if Adina still has a pretty bright future when it comes to this American anthology series. Number 6. Black Lightning Last but not least, we have another CW show that featured one of our favorite pogues. We are, of course, referring to none other than Madison Bailey, who portrays the role of the beautiful Kiara on Outer Banks. Before taking this role, though, she was given the chance to be a superhero in the Black Lightning franchise on The CW. This saw Madison bringing the role of Wendy Hernandez to life, who had the power to cause hurricanes, a power that would have certainly come in handy throughout the runtime of both season one and two of Outer Banks. Although she only appeared on The CW show for a grand total of six episodes, it goes without saying that Madison made a real big impact on both fans and the showrunners of Outer Banks, securing her the spot of Kiara without much difficulty. So what do you think of the other shows that the Outer Banks cast members have been involved in? Be sure to let us know in the comments section down below.